Hi, my name is Christy, and yes, I love Kung Fu Panda so much. The trilogy, oh my god, so good. But yeah, we're about to get started with my presentation in a second. So yeah, just a um, warning, I will have my camera off for a majority of my presentation because my Wi-Fi kind of gets a little funky. So yeah, but I'll have my camera on for now. So basically, hi, my name is Christy. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Clean Energy Fellow here at NPR. And today I'll just be discussing some of the projects I've been working on throughout the year. Next slide, please. So yeah. So basically for like my projects this year, I've noticed that like a lot of my work has been focused on community engagement. The theme that I noticed throughout my work is popular education, which is an educational approach where everyone is a teacher and a learner. So moving on to the next slide, I kind of wanted to give y'all a historical context to popular education. So basically Paulo Freire is an Brazilian educator and philosopher who wrote the famous book, Pedagogy of the Press, which reframes our tra traditional oppressive educational system through the popular education model to be more inclusive of everyone and allowing everyone to share their lived experiences in the classroom. So using this model, that means, again, this brings back the phrase, <laughs> everyone is a learner and also the teachers are learners as well. So yeah, basically using this approach, um, the main goal is to lead action for social change. So moving on to the next slide, I want to show y'all a visual model of what popular education is like. So here are the five steps. So basically with the first step, we start with people's experiences. So allowing people to share out and have their experiences be validated. And then th that leads into our second step, which is looking for patterns. Like what parallels do we find in our experiences? Like what aligns? And using that knowledge, we can use this and create theories out of it. And with those theories, we move on to the, our next step, which we can use this past knowledge to create a plan for action. And then practicing skills and strategizing, which prepares us for the final step, actually applying everything and accumulation of all these steps, applying the, the knowledge and skills that we've been practicing in order to find a solution to our problems. So yeah, moving on to the next slide, I wanted to show y'all an application of the spiral model. So basically here, um, we hosted an introductory workshop at Lions Creek Crossing, where we discussed community environmental resilience. And on this workshop, we collaborated with a lot of other youth organizations, and we created a series of engaging activities, like map making, tours around the neighborhood, and collage making. So I basically facilitated the collage station where I led a conversation about resilience and giving that space for participants to share about their experiences with environmental injustices in their communities. But yeah, so by finding these parallels and listening to each other's experiences, we then built equitable solutions together. So moving on to the next slide, I just wanted to give you all an example of what we were doing in the collage station of the workshop. So basically, this is how it worked. So we had two collages. The first collage was representing our pr present problems in our communities. So for example, like in this collage, we see that the theme here is toxicity in the environment. And we can see this through symbolism of the refineries and the crowded roads that produce this excess uh, CO2 and also lack of food access. But moving on to the next slide, we see that this slide is really um, a representation of our ideals for our community. Like what would our ideal vision for our community look like? So here we can see that like, this is a complete contrast to what we just saw before, where there's like symbolism of green energy through like the solar panels and lots of fruits and veggies to represent equitable food access and also accessible transportation to cut down the carbon emissions. So through the collage making, we make we made learning engaging by using a hands-on activity and giving participants the space to share their lived experiences and to come together to create relevant solutions for their community's environmental problems. But yeah, moving on, I just wanted to give y'all one more example of the application of the spiral model through our collaboration with the Asian Pacific Environmental Network, also known as APEN, and with us, NVR. And this is basically the second workshop in the Resilience Workshop series. 
So I basically co-created this workshop with my fellow Manuel, who y'all heard from today. And from this workshop, we had to think outside the box, um, considering like this workshop was a bit more in depth and nuanced compared to the first one. So to create engaging activities, uh, we decided to do like activities like drawing resilience terms through a website called Scriblio. We're hosting a Q&A session on a pen's resilience hub work and facilitating an in-depth conversation about resilience. And through this conversation, we really highlighted our personal work to boost resilience in our communities. So basically, like through this workshop and collaboration, we paved a line of communication between our youth organizations to give youth an opportunity to share and to be heard and validate each other's experiences, which built solidarity among us. And this gave us the courage and confidence to be able to discuss possible solutions to create an equitable and sustainable future. So moving on, so along with the spiral model, there are also basic steps and goals that are associated with popular, popular education. So basically like the first principle is to show people that they are actually capable of taking initiative to change their communities. And I know for like many of us, stepping up to make a change and taking initiative can be a bit daunting because in the face of large scale issues, our individual contributions may feel a bit minuscule, but we can combat this by connecting people's experiences of local environmental justice issues and showing people that their struggles are collective experiences. And using the solidarity that we build within communities by sharing our stories and finding parallels, we can encourage more people to organize and take action to solve community issues. So I just wanted to show y'all an application of the principles of popular education through the next slide. And this is basically where through the <laughs> collective project of the Energy Justice Curriculum with Local Clean Energy Alliance, which is an organization that advocates for energy equity and democracy. So currently in the Local Clean Energy Alliance, which I'll be calling LCEA from now on, like we are currently working on an energy justice crash course to highlight the financial struggles of low income people because they're the most vulnerable to rack up debt to pay for the inflated energy bill. So yeah. So moving on to the next slide. So I really wanted to highlight a prominent part of our project, which is novellas, right? And just in general with this curriculum, like we hope that like we can spread more awareness about the financial struggles of low income Spanish speaking populations. And again, as they're the most vulnerable to accumulate debt who pay for the energy bill. So through the novellas, we intend to emulate the first principle of popular education by educating underrepresented folks on the corruption of investor owned utilities like pg and &E, and how, again, they are the most impacted by the exploitative rate hikes. We also plan to touch on topics like inequities in clean energy programs and how they're inaccessible for low income people. So through these novellas, we can target, we can show our target audience that the financial bill burden of paying for the energy bill is a collective problem shared by many, many people of color and who are also low income and to spark a conversation among communities to also build solidarity to hopefully increase organizing advocacy for our community's needs. So moving on, I just hope like, just like uh, throughout this presentation, y'all can see that popular education isn't just a theoretical framework, it can be in reality through the many tools of popular education. So you too can use popular education to spark a change. And in the next slides, I want to show you like ways I've used tools of popular education in my work. So basically just an overview, like two tools of popular education can take forms like podcasts, articles, videos, and even social media posts, as long as this information is accessible, inclusive, and engaging. So one of the tools of popular education that I use in my work as an energy justice fellow is video making. So in 2022 and 2023, I collaborated with my fellow Anaya on a video series on the COVID vaccine. So to provide some context, in our first vaccine project, we discussed the importance of the COVID-19 vaccine through a three minute, like a little comedic skit. And following up the first vaccine project, we recently made a se sequel this year. 
And we continued with that skit where we discussed the importance of maintaining COVID-19 precautions after getting vaccinated to protect immunocompromised folks and also those who don't have access to healthcare. So by presenting this information through a video, we are sending our message through a visual form that makes this knowledge more accessible and engaging and entertaining as well. So yeah, moving on to the next slide. I just wanted to show y'all one more tool of um, popular education, which I know many of y'all use, which is social media. And I love social media for um, a, a tool of popular education because we can present information in bite-sized chunks. So the information is easier to take in. So basically like here are two posts that I've made for LCEA to spread awareness for green solutions to counter our traditional gas infrastructure. So yeah, moving on to the next slide. We are coming up to the end of our presentation. So thank you all for sticking with me. But just in summary, I hope that like this sticks with you that to create change, we must broaden the limits of our oppressive education system by using popular education to, to make information accessible to underserved communities to allow them the opportunity to build solidarity and organize. So yeah, that's all that I have today. Thank you all for listening. And I really hope that this presentation has inspired y'all to use popular education in your life to spark change.